I want everyone to do something for me this morning. Take your index finger and put it on your chin. Ah. How many of you put it on your cheek initially? Because what we see influences us far more than what we hear, typically. Keep that in mind as we talk this morning because we're going to talk about things that you can do to help your business. Now, I understand that I'm kind of a hard referral because a lot of times people are not real sure what management consulting, business consulting, business coach, what does that mean? So this morning I'm going to give you three things that will help your business or help you personally and then I'll talk about something that uh, I also do for businesses that are failing or need to be turned around as someone mentioned this morning. Uh, so, you'll know something of what I do this morning when we leave, hopefully, if I've done a good job communicating. So, the first tool that I want to talk about is trust. We trust people, not products or companies. Lexus is a great brand, but if you don't trust that dealership or that salesman at the Lexus place, you're not going to buy a Lexus from him. People trust people. You have to be trustworthy in your business in order to be successful. David Meister and two of his colleagues wrote a book called Trusted Advisor. I'd recommend you read that if you get a chance. And in that he talks about how trustworthiness is calculated or how we come up with some way to quantify that. And it's based on credibility, reliability, intimacy and selflessness. These are three or the four components that make up whether or not we feel someone is trustworthy. Now what do we mean by those terms? Credibility are the words or the things that we do. I can trust what she says about intellectual property. She's very credible on the subject. That's what we mean. Reliability. Those are the actions. If someone uh, is reliable, we might say, if he says he'll deliver it tomorrow, he will deliver it because he always keeps his word. That's reliability. Intimacy is security. It's whether or not you are comfortable sharing something very personal with someone else and whether they will keep it that way. I can trust her with that information. She's never violated my confidentiality before and she'll never embarrass me. And finally, selflessness, and this is the key component, key characteristic that impacts trustworthiness the greatest. I don't trust him. I think he's too concerned about what he gets out of it. In other words, he's in it for himself. She's in it for what she can get out of it. That's selflessness or lack thereof. So, David Meister has put this into a formula. And it's fairly neat the way it all works out. The top row we rate from one to five, with five being the highest. The bottom we rate selflessness from five to one, with one being the best, five being the worst. So the maximum that someone could rate on this trustworthiness equation is 15 over one, which is 15. That's someone who's impeccable in all those areas and is selfless, concerned about the customer completely. Let's see how this impacts someone who may be just average. Credibility, they're up there. Reliability, most of the time. Intimacy, probably not somebody you'd want to share the family secrets with, but still, pretty good person. They're kind of looking out for themselves most of the time. Turns out, instead of a 15, this person scores a 3. So you see the impact of not practicing the golden rule, or the platinum rule, whichever one you'd like to put into practice. Can't go wrong with either one. So as a business owner, work on trustworthiness. You have to be trusted. Second thing, pain. We don't like pain. Pain and pleasure are the two things that motivate people. 
That's it. Everything falls under pain or pleasure. Pain in the present, pain in the future, which is fear. Pain in the present, a far greater motivator than pain in the future. Pleasure, how many of us have ever had it, bought something on impulse? <laughs> there you go. You responded as a consumer out of pleasure. And then pleasure in the future, you have to have a track record with someone in order to uh, be a customer of them because of this pleasure that it brings. You've gotten pleasure before from the product they sell and so you, you have a track record of that with them. But pain is something you need to understand as a business owner or as a business person when talking to your customer. Your customer comes to you with a problem. The stated problem is never the reason they are there. You have to ask questions in order to get down into the pain funnel. The first thing they state is never the problem. So ask, what do you mean by that? And then they will begin to tell you more. And then, what have you done about it? And they'll tell you what they've done. How does this impact you? That's where the pain really is. So when you understand that the first thing they say to you is not really the problem, ask questions, find that pain point. What is it that really is the problem? How does it impact them? When you understand that, you can sell them anything because clients purchase from people who understand their pain. So remember, the stated problem is not the real pain. The last thing is GC. What is this? God complex. <laughs> I encounter this with small business people and large corporate folks as well. What is the God complex? The God complex is the idea that in this complicated world we live in, I have the solution to any problem that's going to come up. I've met with business owners that others think I might be able to help, but after having lunch with them, they know everything. They've got it. And that's fine. And I'm not talking about confidence. I'm talking about the inability to look at things in a different way. And that's what I bring as a business consultant. Archie Cochran, ever heard of him? Probably not. He was an epidemiologist and he ran a clinical trial and he believed that heart attack patients recovered better at home than at ho in the hospital in the cardiac ward. Physicians were up in arms over this. Cardiac cardiologists said, this is an unethical trial, don't do it, but he did it anyway. He met with them and said the preliminary data is in. It's not enough really to, it's not statistically significant, but this is what we found. And he showed them the data. And sure enough, he said, you were right. Patients are far better off in the hospitals than at home. And they said, shut it down. You're killing patients for the sake of this trial. And then after it died down, he said, by the way, I swapped the columns. Cardiac patients actually recover better at home than in the hospitals. Are you ready to shut the hospitals down? The God complex, very common in medicine. We kind of label doctors with it a lot, but business owners fall into that as well. Be careful that you don't get the God complex. Watch your ego. Sometimes it gets a little bit too big, too big to fill the room. So trust, pain, God complex. And very quickly, companies that are in need of turning around are companies that I look for and would love to help. What are the signs? Here are the signs. Decreasing sales in a growing market, that's trouble. Expenses up, profits down. You can read the list. Those are the signs of a company that's in trouble. Some of the things I would suggest that we do, maybe uh, more, sometimes less, business plan, launch plan, keep and recruit good employees, and so on. These are the kinds of things that will help a business turn it around if they have someone looking at it, coming at it from a different perspective. These are the things or the people that I think can bring me good referrals. So keep a lookout for CPAs, bookkeepers, commercial insurance agents. All these people interact with small to mid-sized businesses that are in need of, uh, of help sometimes. That's my website. Appreciate your kind attention. I think my time is up.